Hi, I'm Carolyn Ivers Landis, PhD. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and associate professor of pediatrics, and I'm going to be talking today about sleep and sedentary behavior for young children. First, um, to talk about sleep, it's really important to make certain that your child um, has the right sleep environment and is following good sleep hygiene practices. And here are just some tips for you to pay attention to. The bedroom should be dark, and but night lights are okay. And you should also pay attention to what type of blinds are on the windows and if there might be lights shining in from the hallway that might be too bright. Um, the bedroom should be quiet. So if somebody is getting up really early in the morning or someone's going to bed much later, you might want to think about what to do about that, like getting a white noise machine or doing something um, to make certain that it's as quiet as possible. Um, the bedroom should be somewhat cool, and I know sometimes in the summer, um, parents and children um, talk to me about how it's too hot in their home, so you really have to pay attention to that. And um, if you don't have air conditioning or central air conditioning, consider a fan. And adequate bedding, pillows, blankets, of course, should be provided. And um, one of my number one recommendations, and I know your children are young, but that a TV should not be in the bedroom. We really call that a sleep stealer because um, this very much so interferes with sleep and there's many reasons why. The light from the screen uh, might interfere with children's circadian rhythms, the light's going in through their eyes, it might affect the hypothalamus of their brain and confuse the brain in terms of that it's nighttime, it's not daytime. Also, obviously, you cannot supervise the child on exactly what they're watching. And sometimes um, the TV is left on all night, which is a problem because it's not a constant noise. It's changing all the time. And therefore, um, children, it, it could help have children wake up at one of their wake ups and have what we call an extended wake up. I mean, every person wakes up four to six times a night, but whether or not you're awake for any period of time, um, also is related to things like this. If there's something in the bedroom that the child might actually wake up for, that might make them more likely to have an extended wake up. So those are some of the primary tips about the sleep environment that you should look into. Um, in terms of sleep hygiene, for this age of child, we really recommend a short and sweet bedtime routine. About 20 minutes is plenty. It should be relaxing. Some people start the bedtime routine a couple hours before bedtime, and that's a little bit too long. Um, again, you don't want to be wrestling, <laughs> sprinting around the house, but you don't have to be too sedentary at that time. And you should kind of try to do things in a consistent order so the child, it's signaling to the child that bedtime is coming up soon. And really what's important is to establish not necessarily even regular bedtimes, but wake times. And consistent wake times during the week and on the weekend, if possible. For this age of child, that's usually fairly possible. Obviously, when children get older, especially when they're teenagers, there might be some differences on the weekends. They might sleep in a little more. We don't expect a teenager to get up at six during the week and then at six on the weekend. But for the, your little ones, they probably are gonna be getting up um, close to the same time. And I wouldn't vary it by more than about an hour and a half. Um, adequate duration of sleep is approximately 10 hours for young school-aged children, and I just want to emphasize that this really is a guideline that some children need more sleep than other children, and some children need less sleep than other children. And um, you might have a sense of if your child is a long sleeper or a short sleeper. And I find a lot of children might be struggling with difficulties falling asleep because they are being put to bed too early. So whereas I really want to stress that they get an adequate duration of sleep, I also want to let you know that if your child is having difficulty falling asleep, you might want to try a later bedtime. And when they're falling asleep more quickly, then move their bedtime back by about 15 minutes every few nights. We call that bedtime fading. Again, let's say your child is falling asleep at 10 and you want them to fall asleep at 8.30, you might fall, put them to sleep at closer to 9.30 and then slowly move back their bedtime until their body can fall asleep earlier. That's very important and rather than just to get into struggles with them for an hour and a half or so. Um, the napping schedule should be appropriate for age. 
and naps are not really recommended for young school age children and some children nap for too many hours too late in the afternoon and that makes it difficult for them to go to bed at night. Um, it's okay if your child is taking a short a little nap a little bit earlier in the day. Some children hang on to that a little bit longer but if they're getting adequate sleep at night and still need a long nap, you might want to check with your pediatrician or check with our research team because they might have um, some problems um, with needing too much sleep. Also, avoid late day caffeine, and we would really recommend no caffeine for young children. Um, one of the reasons why sleep is addressed in this program is that there is a relationship between sleep and obesity and I was just going to mention a couple studies. We've really found looking at studies, looking at children over time, which we call prospective studies, that less total sleep time is associated with childhood overweight at nine and a half years. So following children from infancy all the way up to nine and a half years, those children that slept less, and this was even 30 minutes less, tended to have a higher weight. And another study looking at um, children and sleep and weight, they were looking at in children aged 3 to 12, those who had greater total sleep time years earlier had lower BMI for age percentile. So again, looking at, um, it really is important how much sleep your child gets. And if they're getting enough sleep for their age, they're less likely to become overweight or obese even later in their life. So inadequate sleep is related to increased hunger and appetite, stress, and potentially even altered growth hormone. And we know this by some research with adults that sleep restriction four hours or less in young men and adult cohorts results in higher levels of subjective hunger, They're, they feel hungry, and changes in the hormones that control appetite, such as leptin and ghrelin, are some of those hormones. And sleep-deprived people, they really, um, they demonstrate increased cortisol release, which um, is a stress hormone, and altered growth hormone secretion and signaling pathways. And so you really wanna make certain that children are getting enough sleep and we think this might be, these might be the mechanisms um, through which sleep and obesity are linked. Again, through the hunger, appetite, stress, and some maybe possibly the growth hormone routes. Um, this is some more, um, the relationship between sleep and obesity. Looking at preventing weight gain and overweight and obesity with adequate sleep, so that if the child is getting adequate, sweet, adequate, adequate sleep, um, they're getting more leptin that signals the brain to decrease appetite, to slow down eating, and they're getting less cortisol, and that reduces cravings for carbohydrates and fats. I think all of us know that when we're tired or stressed out, we crave what we call junk food, which tend to be higher in carbohydrates and fats. So just in summary, children who get adequate sleep are really less likely to be overweight or obese than those who don't. Um, I just wanted to talk to you also a little bit about the benefits of sleep in addition to weight management. So thinking and learning, young children that get adequate sleep are better in terms of memorization of information. They're learning better based upon hearing information, auditory learning, and they're learning better based upon even visual learning, what they see. They also have um, better creativity and problem solving. And this could also relate to pretend play skills. And there's also have better motor skills and sequences of motion. So this can help with sports. So if your child is in soccer or gymnastics or dance, this can help and also reduce injuries. So these are other benefits of sleep. Um, and just a little bit more information about how sleep helps with consolidation of memory. While you're sleeping, your brain reorganizes memories so you can pull up the information when you need them. And this really helps children make sense of new material they learn by using information they already know. And so that's fun for older kids when you talk to them about studying for a test and then finding out that the next day, um, they're, I mean, while they're sleeping, their brain is still working on that information so they know it even better when they wake up. That's kind of a fun information to give to older kids. 
Um, and really, the sleep is needed in the first 24 hours after taking in the information. It's really best if you have three nights of good sleep in a row, which kind of argues against cramming um, for something and doing an all-nighter before a test. Um, but I know this is not an issue for the little ones yet. Um, continuing on with benefits of sleep, it really helps with mood and it reduces irritability. So children are not as grumpy or grouchy and also reduces mood swings. And one of the nice benefits is it helps with personal and interpersonal skills. So children have a better ability to communicate and have good relationships with others. And they also have better ability to cope with problems and with stress. Um, again, moving on to preventing illness and pain, sleep protects children's immune systems. So they can fight germs and diseases and get sick less often. And it also reduces headaches. And once the children get a disease or an illness, it helps them recover more quickly. So for example, if you have a more optimal sleep, you get over colds faster. Um, we talked a little bit about preventing injury in terms of improved motor skills. Children that get better sleep again are doing better at sporting events, using equipment like weights and playing sports. And it also helps kids from blanking out or losing focus. It improves energy levels so you can stay awake in school and can help you be motivated to exercise, improving digestion and facilitating growth. We talked about growth hormone earlier. So those are all the benefits of sleep. Um, uh, I would be happy to talk with people that have more questions about sleep um, to see, come see me at Rainbow in the sleep clinic. and. Um, can just call and ask for me, Carolyn Ivers Landis, I'm at the Central Scheduling Line, which is 216-844-7700. Again, Carolyn Ivers Landis, and I do see children with behavioral sleep issues and would be happy to talk with you about your child's sleep. Um, now I wanna go and talk a little bit about screen time for young children. Screen time, as we're defining it for this um, program, is television, video games, and non-academic computer time. And for older kids, we're talking about texting. And how much is too much? Really, we recommend, um, all of the national organizations recommend two hours of screen time or less per day on average. So a total of 14 hours or less per week. And I know some children do fine during the week, but then on the weekends, they might have a very large amount of screen time, as much as six to eight hours a day we see for some children. And again, no TV in rooms where children sleep because that just encourages greater um, sedentary behavior. And how is screen time related to weight? Children who watch two hours of TV or more daily um, have been found to be twice as likely to be overweight as children who watch one hour or less daily. Children who watch too much TV or are um, engaging with screens too much don't spend as much time being active. They might often snack while watching TV. And they also see commercials for unhealthy foods um, that are advertised on the TV. And so one of the tricky parts is to figure out how to reduce screen time and center behavior. So we recommend taking the TV and the computer and the video game out of the child's bedroom. We recommend replacing sedentary screen time with active time. And there's so many different things that you can do with children, especially as it's coming you know, into the springtime. Um, encouraging dancing, walking, jumping rope, doing things as a family, and spending time, even if you're making dinner or something, your child could be dancing to music or looking at a video um, that you might rent from the library that does some fun activities for the child. There also is a screen-free week where you can try going an entire week with no one in your family um, have, being connected to a screen or um, doing this type of behavior, and it's May 5th through 11th this year of 2014. So that is basically information I wanted to let you know about. So again, we're recommending 10 hours of sleep approximately for children of your child's age and also recommending that they have less than two hours a day on average of sedentary behavior. So thank you very much and it was great to get to share this information with you and good luck.